21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Who shot? Who? Well, where? All right, just take it easy. Talk slower so I can understand you. Now, where is this? Yeah? Yeah? You're in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right, don't worry about that part of it. We'll take care of it. Yeah. We'll send the ambulance right away. That's right. Right away. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. It was a dark, foggy night, and between dusk and midnight, we were plagued with automobile accidents. Two pedestrians were struck by cars, one on York Avenue and one on Lexington. Both were taken to Mount Sinai Hospital in serious condition. Out on patrol of the precinct, I instructed my operator, Patrolman Eisman, to proceed through the street slowly and with extreme caution. It was impossible to see clearly for a distance of 50 feet ahead. At midnight, I returned to the station house to turn out the platoon for the 12 to 8 tour. The 52 men who would patrol the streets of the precinct on post and in sector cars for the next eight hours were assembled before me in the muster room, ready to be posted. Sergeant, post your platoon. Platoon, attention. Right, face. Board, march. I'll be in my office, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. 21st. Who? Oh. oh, wait a minute. Where is it? Yeah. 21st Precinct, Captain Kennelly. Sergeant Waters on TS, Captain. We've got a report a cop has been shot at 96 in the drive. I'll be right out. Yes, sir. CB. Yeah. 96 in the East River Drive. Okay. Now, well, what do we got, Sergeant? Class 681. Putting it out on the yeah now, Captain. Class 681, 94 New York. At 96 in the East River Drive. At signal 32. Report of a police officer shot. The ambulance is responding. Case. Who's on post over there? Burning, Captain. He was there for the 4 to 12, and his relief hasn't had a chance to get over yet. I better notify detectives. Yeah, go ahead. This is Sergeant Waters on TS. We've got a report of a police officer shot at 96 in the East River Drive. I don't know. Well, that's all we got. Okay. There's also a traffic man on the job at the intersection, isn't there? Yes, sir. Well, how'd you get it? A civilian used the call box on the corner there. Told me there was a cop shot. He was excited. Hung up. I couldn't get any more out of him. All right, I'll go over there. Yes, sir. I went to my office for my hat and then back through the muster room to the front door of the station house. Patrolman Egan and Lewis were waiting at the curb to relieve the operator and recorder of sector car number three, who were due to go off duty. Within a minute, the car came around the corner and stopped in front of the station house. After the relieving operator, Patrolman Egan walked quickly around the car to inspect it for recent damage and entered the mileage and gasoline gauge readings in his memorandum book. I got in and instructed him to make the run to 96th Street in the East River Drive. The weather was still foggy and visibility extremely poor. As we turned off First Avenue east on 96th, I could make out two sector cars parked along the curb. The scene of the shooting appeared to be on the site of the old transit system power generating plant which was in the process of being wrecked to make room for an overpass cloverleaf entrance to the East River Drive. All right, Egan. Hey, watch it, Captain. Watch 
Over here, Captain. Sergeant? Where are you? Sergeant Tinney. Over here, Captain, with the light. Oh, okay. There's some of you men there. Take a look at that pile of bricks there. You, McCarroll. Baron, right. Well, who was it, Sergeant? Who shot? Uh, we don't know yet, Captain. He's not identified. The traffic man? Uh, oh, no, sir. It wasn't a cop that was shot. No? Nothing over here, Sergeant. Well, look on the other side there, will you? Right. Well, who was it? A uh, cop shot a thief. Brennan. Oh. No, over there, Captain. It's pretty bad. Hey, watch, watch your stuff there, Captain. Kind of treacherous. All right. The civilian they sent to ring in got it kind of mixed up. Never did get over this part, Sergeant. Well, look the other way then, huh? What are they looking for, Sergeant? Uh, the gun the boy had. Well, wasn't it right near him? Uh, no, sir. Did he have a gun? Well, Brennan says there were three shots fired at him. Uh, all right, you men. Put the captain in there, huh? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Hello, Captain. Hey, you. Put your light on him there. Yes. Oh. See, pretty bad, huh, Captain? You say anything, Sergeant? Uh, no, sir. I was unconscious when I got here. Hey, that ambulance better get here. Hey, Bacardo! Baron! Yes? Why don't you go to the car, ring it again for that ambulance? I... Pretty young kid. Yes, sir. Yeah, about 17, I'd say. Maybe 16. Huh? How many shots did he fire at Brennan? Uh, three, Captain. Not according to Brennan. Any identification on him? Yes, sir. He had a wallet in his pocket. He says he's uh, Harry Mickleton, 733 East 107th. How many times was he hit? Well, just once, it looks like, Captain. That's, that's all I can see. Get Brennan over here. Yes, sir. Hey, Brennan. Hey, you two. Stick with him until the ambulance comes. Yes, sir. Hey, Brennan. Yes, sir. I'm over here. Where? Over here. The captain wants to see you. Who was next on the scene after Brennan, Sergeant? Well, I was, Captain. My operator and I. Underwood. Well, what'd you find? Well, we stopped the car on the street out there. I saw a flashlight back in here. I called. Brennan answered. I came on back. He was over there trying to do something for the boy. And did he tell you what happened? Yes, sir. He said he, he jumped him trying to break into a parked car. Chased him back in here. Some shots fired at him. He fired back. Oh. Sergeant? Mm. And you? Yeah, right here. Oh, Captain. Brennan? Uh, any sign of the gun, Brennan? No, sir. You better go help him look for it, Sergeant. Uh, yes, sir, right away. And, uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Check on that ambulance again. Yes, sir. Hey, has anyone taken a look over here? Yes, sir. Well, what happened, Brennan? Well, I was walking my post, Captain. It was just about 12 o'clock, almost exactly. I turned the corner of First Avenue onto 96th. Yeah. There was this car parked on the street about... 35, 40 feet from the corner. So this fellow standing right at the door there. Looked to me like he was trying to pry open the vent window. 35 or 40 feet? Yes, sir. Well, how could you see that far ahead of you in this fog? Oh, sir, the uh, car was parked right under a street lamp. That one there, Captain. I could see what he was doing. All right. And? Well, I saw him, but he didn't see me. I figured I'd get up on him and catch a thief in the axe, so I started to him. Yeah. He spotted me when I got within 15 or 20 feet of him and took off. Uh-huh. I hollered at him to hold up, but he kept on going. He cut right in here into the rubble. I came in after him. Well, I didn't see exactly which way he went at first. Then I spotted him again. He was hiding over there, around there someplace. I called into him to stand up. He stood up all right. He stood up and fired two shots at me. I thought it was three. It was three altogether, Captain. I had my gun out, and I fired at the flashes. Fog was so thick, that's all I could see. I started to come in on him, and I saw him up on top of that pile of bricks over there. He took another shot at me from there, the third one. I fired two shots back at him, and then I heard a scream. I thought for sure I hit him, so I went over to the pile of bricks and looked around. There he was. I examined him. He looked pretty bad. I looked for the gun he had. It wasn't anywhere around. I left him and ran back out to the street, stopped the first civilian I saw, and told him to go to the call box and ring in. Then I came back in here. I looked for the gun some more. I couldn't find it. That must be the ambulance, huh? Yes, it must be. 
When you spotted him working on the car window, didn't you see how young he was? It was pretty hard to see anything, sir. You saw enough to convince you he was trying to break into the car, didn't you? Yes, sir. Uh, you chased him off of the sidewalk and into here, over the rubble. That's right, yes, he turned and fired two shots at you. Yes, sir. And it wasn't until after he fired the first two shots that you returned the fire yourself. No, sir. And when he got up on top of that pile of bricks, he fired at you again. Yes, sir. Then you fired two more shots. Yes, sir. There's uh, no possibility you could be mistaken about him firing the shots? No, sir. All right, over this way. I mean, uh... It's not possible that what you thought were shots were, in fact, uh, an automobile on the drive backfiring? No, sir. I saw the flashes. All right. Let's go over there. Yes, sir. All right. Here we are. He was shooting at me, Captain. Hey, come on. Underwood. Bacardo Baron. Yes, sir. Uh, a little help getting him on the stretcher here. Huh? All right. All right. Get his legs. Oh, I got up. Put him on. Is it... Now, easy, easy, easy. He was shooting at me, Captain. Uh, There's no question about that. Isn't there? All right. Now, watch the front. Hey, watch it there, will you? Lift. That, that's it, easy. Is it clear up ahead? Move on. Come on. All right, go ahead now. Watch the loose stones. Easy now, easy. Take your time. Okay, go ahead. Straight ahead. I hope the kid makes it, Captain. You better hope for something else, Brennan. You better hope we find that gun. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police worked in the world's largest city. You're accused of a crime you didn't commit. The authorities won't even tell you what the exact charges are. They take you out of your hometown to a place a thousand miles away, and you're held for three years without ever knowing what it is you're supposed to have committed. When your trial is finally held, you're not allowed to present any witnesses in your defense, and they don't even permit you to have a lawyer to handle your side of the case. It's cut and dried. You might as well plead guilty. Because that's the way they're going to decide it anyhow. That's a pretty frightening situation, isn't it? It could happen in some countries, but not in ours. And you know why? Because of the sixth article of our Bill of Rights. That's what protects you and every other American citizen from what we've just described. Listen to what it says. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Yes, those are your rights, guaranteed by our Constitution. It's something that no one can ever take away from you. It is one of our freedoms. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. The badly wounded suspect was driven straight down the East River Drive in the ambulance to Bellevue Hospital. Meanwhile, detectives of the 21st Squad under the command of Lieutenant Matt King arrived on the scene to take over the investigation. They and the uniformed officers continued to search the area for the gun which patrolman Edward J. Brennan said had been fired at him. An emergency service truck was sent for Portable gasoline generators were set up to furnish power for giant floodlights. The search for the gun continued. Extra men were detailed to keep the traffic moving on both 96th Street and the East River Drive and to keep the curious off the site. At 1.20 a.m., while the search of the rubber was still going on, Sergeant Tierney was sent to the address 733 East 107th Street, the address found in the wounded suspect's pocket. His purpose was to make a notification of the family. 733 is an old and run-down tenement building. Sergeant Tierney walked up the stoop and found the name Mickleton on a mailbox. He tried the hall door. It was open. He walked up three flights and approached the door in the front of the building. Ah. All right. Yes, yeah, Okay. Police officer. Who? Police officer. Oh. Does uh, Harry Mickleton live here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm his mother. Oh, can I come in? What is it? What's the matter? Did he do something? 
What'd he do? Well, uh, let's sit down, Mrs. Nicholson. We'll talk about it. What did he do? Well, he was stealing from cars. <sighs> no, no, not my Harry. Couldn't be. Suppose, suppose we sit down and talk about it. Hmm? Not my Harry. And he got hurt. Shot. He couldn't. He's in Bellevue. Not my Harry. My Harry's asleep in there. I heard him come in. Oh, did you? I was in bed. Not asleep, just in bed. I heard him come in, go to his room. Come on, I'll show you. Not my Harry. Yeah, I'd like to see. He's asleep. I'll show you. Harry! Harry! What is it, Ma? <gasps> George, where's Harry? How should I know? Harry isn't here? Hey, uh, listen, what's this all about? Who are you? That's my son, my other son, Joe. Harry's hurt. Shot. Where? Yeah, it's in Bellevue. Oh, no. No. All right, all right, all right. Just sit down, huh? My Harry, my poor Harry. Is he all right? Tell me. Don't lie to me. What happened to him? He's dead, isn't he? No, 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 no. He's not dead. But he's hurt pretty bad. But he's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Will somebody tell me what's going on? Uh, you answer a few questions first, huh? Do you live here? I used to. Ma, well, cut it out, huh? He'll be all right. I know. I know he won't. He won't. You don't live here now? Where do you live? In Jersey. I live over there with my aunt. I work there. Ma, cut it out. My poor Harry, my boy. I'll help you. Can I go? Can I go to him? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. You can go there. If you work in Jersey and live there, what are you doing here? I come here and stay once in a while. When I'm in New York late. Huh, Ma? Don't I? Don't you what? Don't, Don't I stay here when I'm in New York? Yeah, you stay here. Must have been him coming, George. I thought it was Harry. That's what I thought. How bad? Very bad? Pretty bad. Oh, my Harry, my poor Harry. What happened? He was shot. I know, but how? Caught, caught him breaking into a car. He ran, fired a couple of shots at the officer. Not my Harry. No, Harry wouldn't do that, would he, George? How should I know, Ma? How should I know what he'd do? He wouldn't. Not Harry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Mickleton. It looks like he did. While the mother and her other son got dressed to be taken to Bellevue Hospital, where Harry Mickleton was in a critical condition, the search for the weapon continued at the scene of the shooting. Although the fog had lifted somewhat, it could not be found. And at 2.15 a.m., more than two hours after the original call, the search was abandoned for the night. A patrolman was assigned to a fixed post to guard over the scene until detectives could resume their search in the morning. I returned to the station house with patrolman Brennan. It was 2.30 a.m. when we walked into the muster room. Now look, Brennan. Yes, sir. You go to the 124 room and get the clerical man to assist you in making out a 61 on this. Yes, sir. All right. As soon as you're finished with that, report to me in my office. Yes, sir. Oh, Captain. Yes? All right. Can I call down to the hospital and find out how the boy's doing? You take care of that 61. I'll let you know how he's doing. Yes, sir, Captain. Hello, Captain. Uh, did you hear from Bellevue on that boy? Yes, sir. And what about him? Not so good, Captain. It was right through the back and into the stomach. They got him on the operating table now. All right, keep me informed. Yes, sir. Can I see you a minute, Captain? Oh, hello, Matt. Sure. Lieutenant King? As okay. soon as I sign the blotter, I'll be right with you. Yes, sir. That was a rough deal tonight, huh, Lieutenant? Yeah. I heard from the hospital. Not so good. I know. I've got a detective down there myself. Oh, yeah? You want to go into my office, Matt? Yes, sir. That'll be all right. Rough deal, Captain. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Sit down, man. Thanks. I don't know Brennan very well, Captain. What kind of 42 has he got? Well, he's a St. John's graduate. He's been in the precinct since he got out of the academy. That's more than a year now. His brother is a fireman. So is his father. He retired about four years ago. Been doing a good job. No complaints on his 42. 
He made one good collar about two months ago. He got a thief in a stolen car as it pulled to a stop at a signal light up there. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. He's a quiet boy. Not a particularly good mixer around the house. Any reason to think he'd be trigger happy, Captain? No, not today. Well, I hate to say this, Captain, but you know what I think. I've got an idea, Matt. There's no sign of a gun up there any place. We don't need daylight. We went through that pile of junk with a fine-tooth comb. I don't think that Mickleton boy ever did have a gun. I think that Brennan jumped the boy, took out after him, pulled his gun, left fire. He hit him, thought better of what he'd done, and told the story about getting fired on himself by three shots. Uh, I'm afraid I think the same way, man. Worst of it is, Captain, we can't find any evidence. The boy was trying to break open that car. Not a mark on it. I examined that window, not a scratch. Oh. I checked the boy through BCI. There's no record on him. No one ever has been arrested in the city of New York under the name of Harry Mickleton. Well, that doesn't mean he's not a thief. No, sir, but it certainly doesn't mean that he is. The closest thing BCI shows under the name of Mickleton is the rest of a boy named George Mickleton. Couldn't be the same. The other one's over 20. He's done a bit in Elmira. He's on parole now. Living and working in Jersey. Oh? Is that so? Records show nothing else. Yes? Run in, Captain. Come in. Oh, hello, Lieutenant King. Brennan. I made out the 61, Captain. All right. Brennan. Yes, sir. Lieutenant King and I have been talking about this. Yes, sir. If you haven't told us the truth about what happened, I'd suggest you change your story right now. It'd be a lot easier all around. I've told you the truth, Captain. You said that three shots were fired at you. Where's the gun? I don't know, sir. It must be there someplace. We looked for two hours, It Brennan. must be there. Brennan, a cop carries a revolver for his own protection, for the protection of the public, and for use in the apprehension of dangerous fugitives. This boy was not a dangerous fugitive. He fired three shots at me. I was entitled to defend myself, sir. The boy is 17 years old. He has no previous record. You say you jumped him trying to break into a car. There's no evidence that the car was tampered with. We can't find the gun. Now, how about giving us a straight story on what happened there? I told you exactly what happened, sir. I don't think you did. I did, Captain. Just a second. 21st Precinct, Captain Canelli. Sergeant Waters on TS, Captain. Yes, Sergeant. We just heard from Bellevue, Captain. Boy died on the operating table. Oh. Mother was down there. Yeah. She insists on coming up here and seeing you. She's on her way. Shall I send her up to the detectives, Captain? No, I'll be here, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Boy died. Oh, it's too bad. I'm sorry, Captain. Brennan, you should be. That mother is on her way up here now. What am I going to tell her? I don't know, sir. Well, you better start thinking of something. We questioned Patrolman Brennan further in regard to the events leading to the death of Harry Mickleton. He stuck to his story without a variation. After a few minutes, Lieutenant King left my office to return to the detective squad upstairs. I instructed Patrolman Brennan to take a chair across from my desk and wait. As I tackled some of the paperwork that had accumulated on my desk, he sat looking straight forward out the open door leading to the muster room. It was a long wait. At 25 minutes to 4 in the morning, Patrolman Brennan saw the front door of the station house open... And Mrs. Mickleton walk in. Captain. Yes? I think the mother just came in. If it's her, we'll know about it. Yes, sir. 21st Precinct, Captain Canelli. Sergeant Waters, Captain. Mrs. Mickleton is here. All right. Ask her to come in. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, just a second, sir. What? Who is he? She has her oldest son with her, Captain. She wants to bring him in, too. That's all right, Sergeant. Yes, sir. It's her, Brennan. Yes, sir. He still fired three shots at you? Yes, sir. Come in. Go on, Ma. You don't have to be afraid of them. I'm not afraid. You are Mrs. Mickleton? Yes. This is Patrolman Brennan. I'm Captain Canelli. Mrs. Mickleton? I came here so you could tell me what to do. 
My boy is down there. Down there, dead. What am I going to do? I don't know. Cop shot him. Is that what a cop is for, to go around shooting boys? Is it? What am I going to do? I don't even have money to bury him. Don't worry, Ma. You'll get taken care of. There's laws about something like this. What about those laws? I can assure you that we're making a thorough investigation. Yeah, I bet. I, uh, I understand you're Mrs. Mickleton's older son. That's my George. The only one left now. How do you do, George? You don't have to be polite to me. Is this the cop that shot Harry? Yes, I'm, I'm the one. What's going to happen to him? Nothing, I bet. How could you do it to my boy? How? Tell me how. Don't talk to them, Ma. You won't get any satisfaction. Please, George. Cold blood like that. I guess you ought to know about cold blood, huh, George? After I get a lesson or two from you, maybe. You ran away and left your brother dying tonight, didn't you? What are you talking about? You were with him. You thought you got rid of the gun, but we found it. You did not. How could you? I... We didn't. But we will. George, you were with Harry. Yeah, Ma, I was with him. See what's on him, Brennan. Yes, sir. Hold still, George. George, why didn't you tell me? Harry was dying. You didn't say a word. Clean, Captain. Okay. What happened, George? It was me and Harry together. We had a few beers. I said to him, come on, I'll show you how to make some money. My Harry. So I took him over there. I stood him on a lot there off the sidewalk where they were wrecking the building. I had a gun. I told him to hold it. I said, watch me, and I went to open the car. Then this cop comes along, and I run into where Harry was. Oh, no, my boy. We lit out across the place together. The cop hollered, and Harry turned and shot. I only saw one, Captain, just one. Cop shot back and hit Harry. He dropped, and I tried to see if he was all right. And I picked up the gun, and I ran to the top of a big pile of bricks. The cop saw me up there, and he hollered again. I took a shot at him. He took a shot back. No. It missed me, but I hollered anyway, so he wouldn't shoot anymore. What am I going to do? I ran out across the drive and threw the gun in the river. Almost got hit by a car going across. It was so foggy. Oh, George. I didn't know what to do. I went to Ma's house. I was going to tell her before I went back to Jersey. I couldn't. I just couldn't. I just went to bed. You should have told me. Ma, please, I'm telling you now. Georgie, what am I going to do? What? I don't know, Ma. I got my own troubles. Thanks, Captain. Thanks for getting me off the hook. How'd you know? Tell me how you knew if he didn't. He only saw one, that's all. I'm entitled to know. Sure, George. I'll tell you. I had a little information, and I took a big guess. First precinct, Sergeant Waters. What kind of a ring? Diamond? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Well, how do you know she's the thief? Yeah. I see. Uh huh. Are you holding it there? All right. Sure, I'll take care of it. That's right. I'll send the officers right over there. And so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct. A factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolmen's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Bryna Rayburn, Harold Stone, John McQuaid, Bill Quinn, and Martin Newman. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking.